Texas. Oh, we love you, God. I thank you for your goodness, God. Oh, you've been so good to me. There's nobody like you, Lord God. You've blessed me so much, Lord God. Oh, you're faithful and true, Lord Jesus. You deserve all the worship and the praise tonight, God. Oh, let's worship and praise God tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, God. Page 248. My heart was distressed, me Jehovah's strength brown. And lo, in the pit where my sins dragged me down, I cried to the Lord from the deep, my reclaim. Tenderly brought me out to golden day. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to save me. Put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. He placed me upon the strong rock by his side my steps were established then here I'll abide no danger of falling here I remain but stand by his grace until the crown I gain he brought me out of the miry clay he set my feet on the rock to stay was a new song of praise by day and by night its sweet notes i will raise my heart's overflowing i'm happy and free i praise my redeemer who has rescued me he brought me out of the miry clay I'll sing of his wonderful mercy to me. I'll praise him till all men his goodness shall see. I'll sing of salvation at home and abroad till many shall hear the truth and trust in God. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the to stay and he put a song in my soul today a song of praise hallelujah i'll tell of the pit with its gloom and despair i'll praise the dear father who answered my prayer i'll sing my new song the glad story of love and join in the chorus with the saints above. He brought me out of the miry clay. Oh, and he set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my soul today, a song of praise. Hallelujah. He brought me out. Without Jesus, I won't talk. 
Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before. Oh, I won't go on. Without Jesus, it just ain't so. Without Jesus, for everything that I would do, I just won't do without the Lord. Oh, and I won't walk, no. Without Jesus, I won't talk. Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before. I won't go. Without Jesus, it just ain't so. Without Jesus, everything that I would do, I just won't do without the Lord. Oh, and I won't walk. Without Jesus, I won't talk. Without Jesus, I refuse to live one day as before I won't go without Jesus it just ain't so without Jesus and everything that I would do I just won't do without the Anybody's got a praise report or a testimony? Let me turn this over to Pastor. God's been good. Good to me. Yeah. 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 Amen. Now he cares about it. This morning I think I get to pray this morning and I was saying, you know, I'll get up and go to work sometimes. I'll make sure I bring my lunch and pack a sandwich and get my boots and get all my stuff that I need to have a good day at work and and I make the mistake of forgetting about taking Jesus with me and wonder why my day doesn't go quite right. And uh, but it makes a difference taking Jesus with you everywhere you go. He cares about all those things. Praise the Lord. Well, Brother Erickson, you got to try to outdo Sunday mornings. That was a pretty good one. That was a pretty good one. You got another one? We'll see. That was good. Very good. Appreciated that lesson. Praise the Lord, everyone. Tonight, I'm going to I want to talk to you about God's priceless Possessions. God's priceless possessions. There are, <clears throat> I guess this is one of those like duh moments when you say, well, yeah, I mean, we know that the things of God are important, but it's how we live our life making God's things important that really is what the Lord is looking for. Uh, you know, the idea of a king taking those arrows and mashing them to the ground just three times and stayed. And the prophet was angry. He said, why? Why? What would ever possess you not to handle this thing with abundance of zeal and, and go overboard? And that's kind of the way I'm shooting tonight. I, I want to just challenge us to really think about 
how important these are and the things of God are in your life today. Uh, John chapter 10, verse number 10. Jesus reading here, John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. The devil doesn't even show up unless he's already got in his mind he's going to steal, kill, or destroy. And <clears throat> But the Lord came also with a mission, premeditated, that he was going to bless. If he could ever get anybody on board, that they would hold the things of God as important. Don't let it just become religion. Don't let it be uh, just trying to keep up with the you know, Joneses down the road. But that we, we do this with zeal, that we live for God with our whole hearts, and God is going to bless that. So, Lord, I pray that you bless tonight. Thank you for your word. I pray that, Lord, as this has been prepared, Lord, I pray that it would be able to be broken into pieces, and, Lord, it would be distributed, and it would be food. It would be, Lord, the answer to the need. Lord, bless tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. I want to consider tonight um, Samson's vow. It's my, my whole text is going to be on Samson tonight. The vow that he took. I know that when we think of Samson, we automatically think of Delilah and the methods that she used to get the secrets to a supernatural power and get Samson to reveal them, ultimately where his strength came. Commend Delilah tonight that she saw power, Samson's power, and his strength to be all one thing. And so she went for that. But today... Consider tonight Samson before Delilah. If you can get, if you could back up a few verses here and consider this with me tonight. Many young men and young ladies today are in the same condition, in the same place that we find Samson. That might be alarming, but I want to consider some of those things tonight and how much, how important it is for us to wake up and see that this is all a God thing, and he wants us to excel. If we'll pass the test, he wants us to be blessed. Judges chapter 13, um, we'll, I'm, I'm not going to take time to read that tonight. If you allow me just to read, refer, refer to the things that were true, Samson was raised in a godly home. His parents were dedicated to the service of God. He was born a Jew. He was raised in a conservative Jewish home. He was not a radical. But when he was in the atmosphere of the Philistines, with all the gods that surrounded them, it seemed like Samson was just the son of Manoah, whose wife had been barren. It's like he never connected who he was and what his calling was to the very lineage and all that God had done for his parents and then what God would do for him. I think sometimes we need to see ourselves in the blessings of God in our lives as an ongoing blessing of what our parents did. Why did God so often use barren women to bring forth children that would be used by God? Well, what I think is, is that it was done as a sign of God's involvement with a child from the start so that the, any glory an accomplishment would be always toward God through that child's entire life when he started with a barren woman. 
because I could never refer back to how great mom was. Other than honoring her, I'm, I'm not saying that he didn't honor. I'm saying that, that um, his greatness came from what God did in their life when we look at some of these different ones who came from barren women. Samson was taught the truth of the one true living God. He was in the same school with all the other Jewish boys in that day. Just talking about the things that Samson did have for just a moment tonight. However, Samson had something in his life that seemingly was even more valuable. That's what I want to talk to us about tonight. It was something that not all the boys at the school had. He was chosen by God. He was hand-selected for a special anointing to rest upon his life. Now think about that, because here in a minute I'm going to infer that you also are. <laughs> oh, I'm just one of many. I, you know, don't have much of a history. I'm just, just little old me, just trying to go to church, live for God. I don't think that that's right thinking. I think when we're talking about the church of the living God, we also need to recognize that we are not like everyone else that we have an anointing on our life for a specific purpose of God. Amen. Why, why did God choose to give you a revelation of this beautiful truth? I, I don't know. I haven't figured that out yet. I've laid in bed a time or two and just thought, God, All the people that are in this community, why, why is it just us here tonight? I know that I don't deserve it. I know it's not because of anything that I've done. The revelation of the one true God and the fact that we can feel his presence the way that we do is the most precious truth obtainable to any man. Come on now. I'm talking about truth, doctrine. I'm talking about the word of God, doctrine, truth, all attaching itself. I mentioned it earlier about give, give Delilah credit. She, she knew where his, Samson's power was and where his strength came from. If we could ever connect it, the dots in our own life, in my own life, and realize tonight that I am anointed of God. I have a purpose God has for me in my life. I am not like anyone else, uh, but I have a calling in my life. Uh, and I'm referring to every one of us in this room. And if I could just realize tonight uh, that I'm doing this because I have this relationship with a one true living God who created the whole heavens and earth, and, and I have been privileged tonight to know him. Oh, the merchant man who went to the market that day and, and, and there as he was going through all the wares and, and uh, what was there in the market, all of a sudden came upon that pearl that was bigger, it was better, it was more pure, it was more round, had better viscosity, better texture. It was, it was perfect. And he saw it for what it was. And he was willing to go home and sell everything he had that he could come and purchase that pearl. I believe this is the key to revival in Chelsea. I really do. I believe that this is the answer when you and I finally come to the realization, or, or should I say even more so than ever before, that, that we are not just privileged, but we are called. That we're not just feeling God, but we are feeling God for a purpose. And God is empowering you, and he's sending you forth. Amen. 
And that person was willing to sell everything just to buy the pearl. That's what you call assessing value to something. We have the treasure that this world is seeking for. That's why Jesus told a story about the man who was walking through the field and came upon a treasure. I've often wondered, why? Then the guy just fill his pockets and run. But the scripture says he purchased the field. <coughs> the location of the treasure was important. And I can say this, Brother Stevens, in all my years of ministry, of which, you know, I'm not claiming to be anything. I'm just saying I, I was there. <laughs> but I've come to this realization. It's hard to get people to come to church. Talk about the people who know they should be. I'm, I'm not, and that's not no reference to tonight. I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm saying... Typically, it's hard to, to get people to make a step to go to church. I think Rachel, last Sunday, hit the nail on the head when she said, uh, I was afraid of what other people would think when I went there. But oh, let's work at being the friendliest church, the most forgiving church, a church that is able to open our arms and welcome people no matter what their past is. This treasure. You see, the world thinks that's silver and gold. But to be able to have fellowship with the very presence of God, the place where he's at, that's why he bought, the, purchased the field. He was smart enough to know just getting a little bit of God and filling my pockets and going home with my normal life is not enough. What I need to do is I need to perceive and understand. Assess the value. Perceive worth. And I need to buy the field. So I can always have the presence of God. That's what David said in Psalm 23. That I might dwell in the house of the Lord. I'm this quoting right now. <laughs> Help me out. Uh, I have to go through the whole thing. <laughs> Louder. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Somehow I wasn't picking that up in the middle. Oh, forgive me. I knew what I meant to say. One thing if I desire to the Lord, that will I seek after. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, give me the heart of David that understood what the value of God's presence. To feel the touch of the divine, the master's hand in our life, helping us to rather be the supernatural, the miraculous, or rather be uh, just an understanding of Scripture that will better help us to live our life. To realize the presence of God is a refuge, truly my shield and buckler, that I don't have to be afraid. To be able to experience the power of God. To see the demonstration of God's power as His people praise and worship with their whole hearts. That's rewarding. Sometimes we have to go through a lot of church services to get there, but it's great to see it. We don't have to go through a bunch of services. Once we start prizing, prizing the possession. <laughs> see, the manifestation of God's power in our midst 
it's worth more than any amount of money. We have to, we, we have to really come to that really un, that understanding, that revelation. As this world gets darker, it seems like even more evil if that were possible. The gift of his presence becomes more and more precious to have that place where we can go and hide ourselves away. I'm not talking about this church facility. I'm talking about wherever we call upon the name of the Lord, wherever we take time and seek him. He's here. Go away. <clears throat> you see, we possess something tonight that others do not. And it is a matter of possession tonight. It's not because we're more spiritual than others. It's not because of our nice facility. It's not a matter of who you know or what you've seen in Pentecost. No, it comes back to assessment of value and worth. As Belteshazzar had his party and took the vessels from the house of God and drank wine out of them and crowded and did all that was immoral, God said, I'm going, I'm going to judge this because you're not assessing the value that you should be. It is the power that takes place when you connect the apostles' doctrine with a life that is consecrated, a life of obedience, a life that desires to come out from all that is vile in the world, a life that is willing and desires to seek to be in his presence. That's holiness. That's holiness. To have God's power, you have to have both. You have to have the apostles' doctrine, and you have to have this holiness, this innate desire that God allows us to have to want more of God and less of this world. You, you can't be successful with one or the other. You see, doctrine and holiness always go hand in hand because that's where power is created. That's where faith is brought to its highest mark when we truly are doing it for the Lord's sake because we believe. Samson was chosen by God to walk in the same type of anointing power. The angel of the Lord paid a visit to Samson's mother before he was ever born, and told her there were specific things that must be avoided and abstained from in order for the special anointing to remain upon Samson's life. This is Judges 13 and 5. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. God always requires something from us when we become a vessel unto honor. He only operates through vessels that are obedient, that are separated, that are willing to obtain and do whatever he asks in order, that, in order that they might obtain his presence. God chose these channels of separation. It wasn't Samson's idea to not touch a dead body, not to drink wine, or, any, or anything off the, 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 the grapes. 
You see, it was God's choice of what Samson must do. But the anointing was for that young man. Talking about, Samson, did you realize what you had? Did you realize what God was going to do in your life? Samson was required to live by God, by his stipulations, and to abstain from things in which others were not required to abstain from. Of course, we know that that's not easy to do. Why does he get to? And I can't. Our kids grow up, they, they get that line down pretty quick. Think of hundreds of other Jewish boys, young men that were the same age as Samson. Yet something divided Samson from all the others. Was he smarter than the rest? No. Was he more dedicated to the word? No. Did he pray longer? No. It really was none of those outward reasons. It was because of his commitment to be a Nazarite. Samson committed to be a Nazarite. I know his mom got the first word and then his dad. I know that they did what they were supposed to by not allowing these things to touch that child's life all the days he was growing up in the home. But Samson had to take this on. Samson had to receive the calling. He had to realize that it wasn't based on what he wanted because God would have his own stipulations. He was going to have to do it. Doctrine, separation, seeking God, walking hand in hand. You see, the thief in Samson's life took notice of his valuables. They saw that this was where Samson had powers that were unlike anyone else. They didn't scientifically define how Samson could take the gates off a city and take them up to a hill. They didn't, they didn't take and pick up the skull later and see and w wonder where the water was. They, they didn't re-examine the skull after he killed all those hundreds of men. They knew it was something about Samson. There was anointing on his life. God wants to do that in our lives. You have to believe me tonight. A Nazarite vow was, was far above the norm, the minimum requirements, far above the minimum requirements to be a Jew in that hour. It's unique to find out that concerning the vow, God told the prophet to tell and speak to the children of Israel. He said, anyone, male, female, young or old, if you choose and desire to be a Nazarite, you can be. It's one of those vows. It was one of those incredible things that was not uh, ministered only to the males for the priesthood. It went far beyond just women picking up water at the well every day and taking care of their families and flocks. God said anybody could do this if you choose to, if you want to. But it's not just me giving you an anointing. It's you receiving it and saying, I'm going to run with this. This vow wasn't, didn't happen because he was born a Jew or that he was raised to worship God. This was something that he had to say, 
I, I'm going to go for this. I believe that God has a plan. Here's the danger of, of enjoying the precious truths from year to the year as opposed to seeking God's purpose because of all the blessings of God in your life. I'm just going to go with the flow, like what I feel going to Chelsea UPC, like the good music. I like eating cupcakes while I study the Word. All those two things are true, but, but God is looking for someone tonight to say, I, for such a time as this, I am called into the kingdom. Don't let your age, don't let your past failures, don't let things other of yesteryear keep you back. That would be like saying, I'm going to embarrass Brother Stevens for just a minute. That would be like telling Brother Stevens that, that because you're not pastoring in Benin anymore, you can't do anything else for God. On the contrary, do you know that Samuel... Wasn't, didn't do all the greatness that he did as a prophet until after he retired the priesthood. He was 70 before he ever took and became influential in, in the nation. We, reading my Bible reading right now of, of Sarah, you know, it's okay that you're beyond years. It's okay. It's hard to explain this because I know it's crazy. It's, it's not logical, but, but with God, all things are possible. I don't know what else to say. God, God's going to do it. He promised you he would bring forth a, ch a child. It was going to be through Sarah, not Hagar. It's a possibility of people becoming involved in their society, their culture, or just even just fellowship in the church, that they lose sight of the purpose they were to come to the house of God was to seek the Lord, was to minister to the Lord. Now, Kevin Erickson, you, talking to you right now, just because you're, quote, unquote, the pastor here doesn't mean that when you walk through those doors, by you doing the duties of a pastor, you've done everything you're supposed to. No, there's a calling of God in your life. Now more than ever, you need to seek God. Because God wants to do great things in his people. But this is the dividing line. This is, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where God says, I, I, I want to do more in your life. It's nice to give you blessings. It's nice that, that everything's going good for you. And I'm happy for you, but, but that's not why you're here. Talk about desiring God's presence in your life. Realizing tonight that you could change that. The dynamics of God's presence. Not that God is, is, is a respect of persons, but God does respect faith. God does respect obedience. God does respect his word. Some are holding on to their traditions. <laughs> Some are passing on family legacies. But these will never keep you committed and seeking God. It's just like a supplement in the house of God. It's like a pastime to enjoy along the way. It's never just about me and you. It's, it's never just about reaching our kids. Or, and it's not just about reaching the world around us. It's, it's realizing today that if God ever had you and I seeking him like he really desires, I believe that he will put people in our path. Do you believe that? I really do. Over in Latvia, you know, every door, only one door on every tenement building had locks on it, cameras on it. 
You're not going to go up there and knock on every door and ask him to invite him to church. You better come up with another solution. So he sang songs and played games, Monopoly and stuff in the park. Ate chips. Holy day. (laughs) And it worked. They had to come to us. We couldn't go to them. This ungodly, unashamed world that we're living in is revealing itself with all the new social standards and cultural changes, scheming, devious. And do we understand tonight how much is speaking to us across our screens? So many have become victims. And we're spending all of our time trying to figure out what's okay and what's not okay because what everybody else is doing. But somehow I'm just trying to challenge us tonight too to realize that God wants you to take more time, to be more focused, to be more purposed, to be more desirous of his presence in your life. When this precious holiness, the separation, is only just to categorize who can be here or who cannot be on the platform, we've missed the purpose of that topic. You know, what we need to do is we need to have it in every pew that we are not trying to be better or cleaner or better looking than another person, but that we are trying to be our very all-in-all best before God. The sold-out commitment comes only by a deep yearning to know God and to please Him. That is the crux of my message. You want souls? Get closer to God. You want a better marriage? Get closer to God. You want a better job? Get closer to God. You better want better situations, get closer to God. Once you've experienced the power and the freedom and all the blessings that come with a surrendered heart, I pray that that will be the thing that will never allow you to look backward again and remember the old days when you could do this or that on your own without permission. Men and women who choose to take the secret vow of God knew that the deep things of the Spirit, the response of the supernatural, only came through this doorway of seeking Him more. You see, the good door that God chooses for your life, where He blesses and moves you to better places, always has a certain and a specific display of commitment that he requires. No more standards, no more don't tell me anything else. I'm just going to, I'm doing fine just the way I am. That is not the attitude you need to have. This is not a Bible study to talk about new standards. Thank God for this church. But it is a challenge today. We have a selective God, not based on quality of people, but definitely based upon the commitment, the sacrifice, the desire of a person. Jesus said, with desire have I desired to eat this supper, this sup with you. He was stating a fact that, that this was in him to want this to come to pass even though it meant that he was about getting ready to be all those horrible things done to him and put him on a cross until he died. Separation tonight is this thing not for me to be better than you, but for me to be better than the old me and to seek him 
and to desire him. 2 Timothy 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Notice that the vow taker did not get to choose what the commitment would be. That's the part we don't know. That's the part we're apprehensive about. But God said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Anything else God asks of you tonight, you can do. You can make it. You're going to be better for it. You're going to rejoice on the other side. Remember always, a vow that you take for God will always take you higher to a higher level in God. Again, if we start to measure ourselves among ourselves, we are not wise. We measure higher always from the standpoint of where I was yesterday and where I want to be today. Don't include anybody else in your visions, in your self-assessments. Does faith or obedience ever make sense? <laughs> no, it always is something that costs. It's always something that's, oh, okay, I'll do it. Later on, we're thankful we did, but until then, we fight it tooth and nail. Here was the requirement of the Nazarite, number six, one through eight. Let me just read this to you. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either a man or a woman shall separate themselves, to vow a vow of a Nazarite, to separate themselves unto the Lord. He shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither shall he drink any liquor of grapes, nor eat moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, from the kernel even to the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled in which he separated himself unto the Lord. He shall be holy and shall let the locks of his hair of his head grow. All the days that he separated himself unto the Lord, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother or his brother or his sister when they die because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation, he is holy unto the Lord. Anything you do for God is, is only a period of time. To think that today you have consistently gained every year that you've been in church is, may not be true. We're a lot like old Israel and the Old Testament. We have our highs, we have our deep lows. We're a graph more than we are a bar chart, <laughs> right? And you have to realize today it's okay. God in his mercy and his grace takes us. But you can rest assured his goal is not to leave us in some valley, but it's to bring us to a new height to go farther in him. When speaking about this separation, we've heard a lot of things. But it's just good discipline or modesty or religious dress code. It's above and beyond that. It's a matter of this thing about wanting the most precious thing in all my life to be able to shine and, and be something I seek for like never before, the presence of God. When they would partake in the acts of separation, always someone was separating themselves unto the Lord. It's not a church standard we're looking for tonight. If you want to be in this church, bless God, everyone's going to X, Y, Z. Where did that ever get us? Some left mad? Some conformed but didn't change their heart? But they got to be and do new things. We're talking tonight about being this influencer in our community, in our life, in our world. And, and it all happens by 
us saying, I, I am going to go farther. Amen. Literally, the Lord's message to a person who was wanting to become a Nazarite, if you want the power of my spirit to rest upon you in this dimension that's far above the norm, there are three outward displays of commitment that I require from you. Not to drink wine or eat grapes or of any kind, including raisins. They were to let their hair grow. They were not cut in any manner. And they were never to touch anything dead or come in contact with any type of corpse, even if it was a sibling or a parent. Even if it doesn't make any sense, this is what God required. I need to bring this to a close. I'm sorry. I don't mean to rattle on too long. Search the scriptures tonight. Never does God's word disclose why he chose those outward signs. No scientific methods. I, I understand why they didn't, you know, have those rules about eating the, the clefts and, 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 you know, not the seafood, the fish was okay, and, you know, all the different qualifications they had. Because later on we have books out that show us that truly it, it kept Israel from trichinosis. It kept them from a lot of different things that would come into their intestines and kill them if they would just eat the right diet. But, I mean, none of these things really, really answer that question tonight. Instead of looking for the wise, we just need to do his will. So all my hot air is to say this. Put in your heart tonight a desire to want more of God in your life, period. Don't wait for the church to initiate it. This is a one-on-one. -on -one. This is you and Jesus. Probably it's a lot like fasting. We're not supposed to tell other people what we're doing. Because I'm not supposed to be boasting over it. Poor me. I've gone all this time now. And thank God the Lord's kept me. God moves through the channels of obedience. God moves through the channels of worship. And so the more we draw closer to the Lord, well, there's just no telling what the Lord's going to do for you in your life. You could be the great influencer of our church. You could take us to new heights. It's going to be your love and your compassion, your mercy, or you're not going to judge others by what you yourself have done. Because that would, that would ruin everything. And you're just going to simply be available and be all that you can be. Talking about things that are priceless tonight. They're God's priceless possessions. Our people that are called out, separated, and desire his presence. Amen. And I believe that that's what we want here. And I think that tonight we have a healthy appetite. And now we just need to realize the sky's the limit. There's nothing holding you back. You want to go farther? Try it. Give God a chance in your life. Would you stand? A little long tonight. I apologize. I should have cut off a few minutes earlier. God is so good. So this message is for we that are here tonight. It doesn't matter who wasn't here. What matters is I think that the Lord has put a something into our hands tonight that said, go for it. Test me. See if I won't do it. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. So Susie, help us out. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. When we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like presence of the Lord. Yes. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. There is nothing like the presence of the Lord. When we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of nothing like the presence of the Lord. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. When we seek his face, he is here in this place. There is nothing like the presence of the Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise 